In this screencast, we're going to discuss mixture problems. I'm going to go through four examples. The first one, we have a coffee manufacturer and they want to sell a new blend that's going to go for $3.90 per pound. And they're going to accomplish that by mixing two coffees that sell for $2.75 and $5 respectively per pound. We want to know how much of each type should they use to make 900 pounds of the new blend and not lose any money. That does not change the amount of revenue they're going to make off of each of the higher price and the lower price coffees. So we want to know how much should be used and when we always when we're solving a word problem we're going to let our variables be equal to our unknowns. We're going to in this case do two since we want to know how much of each type. Let's let x equal the number of lower of pounds of lower priced coffee and let y be the number of pounds of higher priced coffee to be used. We know the total must be 900 pounds for the blend, so that's going to tell us our constraint is that x plus y is equal 900. That's one constraint on the amount to be used. The other constraint deals with the revenue. We have to balance the revenue off. Just remember that whenever we talk about revenue, it's going to be the cost per, in this case, pounds times the number of pounds. So it's your price per unit times the number of units sold. In our case, our balance equation or our balance relationship is going to look like this. We need the revenue from the lower priced coffee added with the revenue from the higher priced coffee must equal the revenue generated from the blend. Now, for the revenue from the blend, we know we want to come up with 900 pounds. It's going to sell for $3.90 per pound, so we're going to have 390 times 900, and that's going to give us the revenue from the blend we see here is the 3510. Now, the revenue from the lower price coffee, we don't know how much of that we're going to use, but we know we're, we're temporarily calling that X. So the revenue from the lower price coffee is going to be $2.75 per pound times X number of pounds. We don't know what it is yet, but we're temporarily calling it X. Likewise, the revenue from the higher price coffee is going to be $5 per pound times the number of pounds used. We don't know what that is, but we're temporarily calling it Y. So this equation becomes $270.75x plus 5y is equal 3510. 3, now let's go to the next page. We have now two equations. We have x plus y equals 900. When that, and then the second equation from the balance of the revenue is 2.75x plus 5y equals 3510. The first equation in this system, we can isolate one of the variables for easily. Let's just say we solve for y. It tells us y is equal 900 minus x. And now we're going to use substitution to substitute that in for y in the second equation. So we get 2.75x plus 5 times 900 minus x equals 3510. And now we're going to solve this resulting linear equation. We can do that by distributing the 5 through the parentheses. And now we're going to combine our like terms together. Let's subtract 4,500 from both sides. We end up with negative 2.25x equals negative 990. Dividing, we end up with 990 over 2.25, which gives us 4,400. Now, that was one of the unknowns. We found x to be 44, not 4,400, 440. And now y is going to equal 900 minus x, which is 900 minus 440, which is 460. Now we don't want to leave that as our answer. Somebody else might not know what x and y stand for. We want to write down an English statement at the end of this. So we're going to conclude that we need 440 pounds of the lower priced coffee and 460 pounds of the higher priced coffee. And that will ensure we have no change in revenue. And that's a typical setup. We're always going to have a constraint equation. We always need to balance something out for these mixture problems. That's going to lead us to our solution. Okay, moving on to the second problem. This problem is similar to the last one in, in some respects, a little different than others. This time we have a nut store and they sell cashews for $9 a pound, almonds for $3.50 per pound. They have a lot of almonds left at the end of the month, so in order to get rid of those 60 pounds of almonds, they're going to mix the 60 pounds with some cashews and sell the mixture at $7.50 per pound. We want to know how many pounds of the cashews should we mix with the almonds, the 60 pounds of almonds, that's a fixed amount, 
in order to ensure no change in revenue. Now in this case, a little different than the last one, we're only going to have one unknown. X, we're going to let X be the number of pounds of cashews used. We know we're going to be using 60 pounds of almonds. But we're going to need to know how many pounds we have total in the mixture to compute that revenue. The total amount in the mixture is going to be the number of pounds of cashews plus the number of pounds of almonds. We don't know how many cashews we're going to be using, but we've called it X. We know how many pounds of almonds we're using, so that expression is going to be X plus 60 to represent the total amount in the mixture. And then we're going to write down our balance relationship. We want the revenue to be unchanged. We don't want to lose money by doing this, or the nut store doesn't want to lose money. So we say the revenue from the cashews plus the revenue from the almonds is going to equal the revenue from the mixture. Like in the last example, we're going to take the price per pound, multiply that by the number of pounds. For the almonds, we know it's $3.50 times 60 pounds. For the cashews, it's going to be $9 per pound times the number of pounds. We don't know what that is, but it's going to be temporarily called X. For the mixture, we're going to sell that for $7.50, and we have to multiply that by how many pounds of the mixture we have, and we determined that was going to be X plus 60. Now, rewriting that, we're just going to solve that linear equation for x. So, eliminate the parentheses by using the distributive property. 350 times 60 is 210. Now, let's subtract 7.5 over to the left, subtract 210 to the right hand side. That gives us this equation 1.5x equals 240. Division by 1.5 gives us that x is 160. So, there's our solution. Again, we want to make a statement at the end of this telling the answer to the problem. We conclude we need 160 pounds of cashews. Always want to put that English statement toward the end of it. Okay, moving on. We're going to do a similar type of problem. This is involving some percentages and some chemistry in this case. We want to know how much water must be evaporated from 40 ounce of a 4% salt solution to make a 12% salt solution. As usual, we're going to define our variable to be what the unknown is, in this case the number of ounces of water to be evaporated. Now if we evaporate x ounces of water, the total amount remaining, which is going to be the amount of the 12% solution we obtain, is going to be 40, what we started with, minus however much we've evaporated. For this, we're going to need to use a little different equation. We're going to use this equation which says that the concentration times the total amount is equal to the portion of the substance. This is just a different way to write down the usual percent equation. Percent times whole equals part, or part equals percent times whole. And we're going to need that. We write down our balance equation, or our balance relationship. The amount of salt is going to stay fixed from the 40 ounces of the 4% salt solution down to however much we end up with of the 12% solution. The amount of salt is going to be unchanged. That's constant. What's going to change is the amount of overall liquid we have. Now, the amount of salt in the 4% solution is going to be the total amount, which is 40 ounces, times the concentration as a decimal. So we end up with 0 0.04 times 40 on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is going to be same calculation, the amount of salt in the 12% solution is going to be the percentage, the concentration is a percent, or sorry, taking that percentage and writing it as a decimal, 0.12, and then multiply that by the total amount of the 12% solution we have. We don't know that um, exact amount, we're temporarily representing that with 40 minus x. And then we solve this resulting linear equation. So distribute to eliminate the parentheses, we end up with 1.6 is equal 4.8 minus 1.2x. Moving things around, we end up with 1.2x equals 3.2. Doing division, we get 3.2 divided by 1.2. Now, if you want to write that as a rational number, what we can do is multiply the top and bottom of that fraction by 10 to move the decimal place. 1 to the right, which gives us 32 over 12, which simplifies to 8.8 .8 over 3. And if you want to round that off to say two decimal places, you'll get 2.6. Again, what does that number 2.67 represent? It's how many ounces we're going to evaporate. So we conclude we're going to evaporate 2.67, or approximately 2.67 ounces, 
to make this 12% solution. So we're going to end up with a little less than 40, of course. All right, but that's how much we're going to take off of the 40 ounces. The last example is similar to the third one in that we're going to be using the concentration of a given solution. So we're, we need uh, 2 ounces of a 6% calcium chloride solution to brew a batch of beer, uh, but the store is only selling 4% solutions and 9% solutions. So we need to mix a little bit of those together and end up with 2 ounces of a 6% solution. And we want to know how much of each should we use. So, as we've done before, we're going to define our variables. That's what we always want to do when we're setting up a word problem. First thing, declare your variables. Those are equal to the unknown or the unknowns if there's more than one. We're going to call x the number of ounces of the 4% solution, y the number of ounces of the 9% solution that we're going to use. Now the constraint in this problem is that we need 2 ounces, so the total, x plus y, has to be equal to 2. Now, the balance relationship is going to state in this case that the amount of calcium chloride should be the same. The amount from the 4% solution plus the amount from the 9% solution should give us the same amount of calcium chloride from the 6% mixed solution. Now, we know we want 2, per, two ounces of the 6% calcium chloride solution. The amount of calcium chloride total from that 6% solution is going to be 6% or 0 0.06 times the amount that we have, which is 2 ounces. Likewise, on the other side, the amount of the 4% solution, or amount of calcium chloride coming from the 4% portion, is going to be 0 0.04 times the amount of 4% of solution, which is temporarily being called x. The amount from the 9% is going to be 0 0.09 times y. We don't know what that amount is yet, so we're temporarily calling it y. Now this gives us a system of two equations and two unknowns. x plus y is 2. 0.04x plus 0.09y is equal to 0.12. Solving this by substitution, we can solve the first equation easily for one of the variables. Say y is equal x minus 2 minus x. Then substituting that into the second equation for y, putting parentheses around it of course, we get the following equation, and which is linear, and we're going to solve that linear equation for x. Limiting the parentheses, we end up with 0.04x equals 0.18 minus 0.09x equals 0.12. Rearranging, we end up with negative 0.05x equals negative 0.06. And then dividing to solve for x, we end up with 0.06 over 0.05, or 6 fifths, which comes out to a clean determining decimal 1.2. So we need 1.2 ounces, remember x stood for the 4% solution, and therefore we need y, the, the amount of the 9% solution is going to be 2 minus 1.2 or 1.8 ounces. And again, we want to say this in English, we don't want to just say x is 1.2 and y is 0 .0, 0 .8 is our answer. This means we need to use 1.2 ounces of the 4% solution and 0.8 ounces of the 9% solution of or the 9% calcium chloride solution. And that's the last example we're going to do in this video. Keep in mind when you're doing these problems, you always want to write down the balance equation. That's the key. Get that down and if you have two equations, you're going to also write down your, your two variables. You're going to write down your constraint equation and then combine the two to solve.